My name is Brooke Whipple, and this is my story. A story about a girl who seeks out the wilderness, who comes alive in the mountains, who yearns to stand in wild places. A story about a girl who is deeply inspired by nature, a girl who is energized by its beauty, stirred by its loveliness, and constantly humbled by its power. A girl that is meant to be in the wild, in the wilderness, and in the woods. Smell of sage. Here, smell it. It's just silent. I love hard work and I love a challenge. But I also like to have a little fun. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I blew it apart. <gasps> There's like hundreds of millions of blueberries. Look at this. Oh, oh. Hey, you. You're gonna jump on your face. <laughs> he just said that he's gonna jump on my face. Yes! They're coming behind us too. They're scared of mice. That's me. I jump on the table and I scream like a girl. That's so disappointing. <gasps> There's one behind you. <laughs> Look at the pitch. Light that thing on fire with a fart. <laughs> and right about then, he rips one behind me. It is just so intense and beautiful. It's oh. amazing. You take your glasses off. I just wish it was just stay like this. Just stay in this moment. wonderful. I grew up in rural Michigan hunting, trapping, and fishing. A regular tomboy. I was a member of the Wilderness Adventure Club in high school and one summer we backpacked Isle Royal National Park end to end, 60 miles. Sitting around the campfire one night after a hard hike we were enveloped by the sound of wolves howling all around us. Still gives me goosebumps. Every chance I got, I was outside and exploring. After high school and a couple of years at a community college, I felt completely uninspired. I was eager to leave my small town and find freedom and life in the mountains, so my best friend and I jumped in her car and headed to Wyoming for jobs in Yellowstone National Park. That was a road trip I'll never forget. Living in that wild country amongst the bison and the bears and the bugling elk, with the camping, hiking, rock climbing, and fishing in backcountry lakes, it only cemented my future plans. My next stop was Vail, Colorado for a winter job as a lift operator. Working there meant I got a free ski pass, and that meant I got to ski to work, ski on my brakes, and ski home. It was my job. Pretty sweet gig for a girl who learned to downhill ski in Michigan after joining the ski club in high school. 
after that, I was off to Alaska, the place my heart yearned for, the place that since I was a child was the place I felt like I belonged. With just a tent, a backpack, and $200, I boarded a plane headed north to fulfill my destiny, deep in my discovery of wild places and live on the edge. I had no job and no place to live, but in my mind, that's just the sort of plan that'll make you figure things out quick. And I was right. I landed in Anchorage and slept in the airport, then took a shuttle bus in the morning down to Homer, where I spent my first night at a bed and breakfast upon recommendation of the shuttle driver. Within two days, I had a place to live. I made a deal with the owner of that same bed and breakfast that if she let me stay in my tent on her property, I would help her clean the place for free. Bam! I had a place to live. Then I bought a bike for 50 bucks and within the week found a second job at a sports shop, selling everything but rockets and mortars for killing fish on the Homer Spit, the strip of land that juts out into the beautiful Kachemak Bay. When I got my first paycheck, I had $50 left in my name. I would live in my tent all summer and work those jobs, going on hikes, fishing, biking, and meeting interesting people. I even got to take over the entire bed and breakfast while the owner went out on vacation. It worked out pretty well. Sometimes it really pays off to just take that leap without a safety net. I had officially fallen in love with Alaska. That fall I went back to college and to keep myself busy, became the lead singer of a rock band. It was pretty fun. Then I met this guy. Isn't he cute? I thought so. I'll talk about him in a minute. First, I want to talk about my next adventure, Montana. Montana was beautiful, and that's where I became a wildland firefighter. Besides fighting wildfires, we did project work and prescribed burns, traveling and working in Oregon and California too. There was only one other girl on the crew, but we all lived and worked together like one big family. One morning in the mountains of Oregon, I dropped down the ridge to pee, only to discover I had squatted right next to some giant morel mushrooms. I quickly took off my hard hat and picked as many as I could manage. They were amazing. My first and only ride in a private jet happened that year too, as we were being rushed to a fire. It was pretty cool. It wasn't long before I found myself back in Alaska, this time Sitka in the rainy southeast, where I was a recreation assistant for the U.S. Forest Service as my internship before I would graduate. The other cool thing I did in Sitka was volunteer at the Alaska Raptor Rehabilitation Center. This is a center that takes in and rehabilitates all kinds of birds. Here I am holding an eagle for a vet. Funny story, I met Barbara Walters in person there at the center one day as she came in to check it out and adopt a bird. But Sitka was amazing, the hiking, the sea kayaking, more great memories made in Alaska. I finally graduated college with a bachelor's degree in outdoor adventure recreation management. And this guy was still with me, my love, David Whipple. So we decided to get married on a beach in Jamaica. It was just the two of us, and that's how we wanted it. Our friends and family got to watch the video. Shortly after we were married, we moved permanently to Alaska. Our first stop was Sitka, where we would become caretakers at the campground at the end of the road, deep in the rainforest. Once again, we had lots of great adventures, and the fishing, well, you just couldn't beat it. Fly fishing was great, and the smoked salmon that you made with it, amazing. Our next adventure would be a big one. Dave and I would become caretakers of a remote homestead at the very tip of the Alaska Peninsula. That's right, pretty much the Aleutian Islands. The homestead was flanked by the Bering Sea and the North Pacific, and we were completely isolated for seven months. The nearest village was Faults Pass, about three miles across the water, but traveling that in an open skiff in the middle of winter was, to say the least, dicey. 
The winter was impressively harsh and the land was amazingly, breathtakingly beautiful. It was an adventure we would never forget and one that would set us up really well for another big adventure yet to come. After we left the Aleutian Islands, we moved to Fairbanks, bought a piece of property, and built this cute little 12 by 12 cabin from logs on the property. And then I met this guy, Neil Eklund, who hired me to be a guide on his amazing 40 by 70 foot log raft on the Yukon River. The raft was set up like a floating lodge, and people would come and float with us for a week or so at a time, taking in the scenery, fishing, great food, and this amazing experience on a log raft. Neil's the only person in the world who is doing anything like this. Besides being a fishing guide on the raft, I also helped cook and I was the entertainment. It was a dream job to say the least. And in our downtime, lots of exploring and of course great fishing, not to mention the beauty, quiet and solitude of floating down the Yukon River on that amazing log raft. My deep respect and admiration for Neil is nearly two decades deep now as our families have become close friends with adventures yet to come and surprises around every corner. Well, we all knew this would happen. <laughs> Belle and Mickey, our kids, and we needed a bigger house so we built another log home. Alaska is full of great things to do as a family and fishing was one of our favorite things. I took every opportunity to get outside and get happy, whether it was skiing, kayaking, hiking, or hmm, my obsession with blueberries. <laughs> Nonetheless, we were gluttons for punishment, built yet another log home in a new place, this time in Delta Junction, Alaska, where we would live for the next six years. And in that same amount of time, I would become a published author. I wrote this fun and quirky book about Alaskan living back in 2007, and that's about the same time I became a filmmaker. A surprise phone call came in 2014. It was Neil. National Geographic had contacted him about doing a reality TV show about floating down the Yukon River. He wanted us to be part of it, so that's what we did. All of our families were involved and it was an amazing time. I was definitely back in my happy place. The show was called Yukon River Run and aired in 2015. I'll let the pictures tell the rest of the story. In 2016, Dave and I were selected as participants in Alone Season 4 on the History Channel. On this season, they would take two family members and drop them in remote locations on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. The idea was to live as long as possible off the land with only 10 items. The last team standing would win half a million dollars. We weren't the only team competing for the big prize. There were seven other family member teams competing. But first, we had to get some camera training because we would be the ones filming the show. There are no camera crews on this show. We do all the filming ourselves. Once you're dropped off, you're completely alone. We had a really great time getting to know all the other participants. And for a short while, we were all treated like stars, eating great food and getting our picture taken. It was all pretty exciting. But believe me when I tell you that when you get dropped into the wilds with only 10 items to survive, it gets real fast. Dave and I didn't win, but we did last a respectable 49 days with absolutely no regrets. It was an amazing experience. And despite losing 28 and 42 pounds, respectively, we were extremely grateful for the opportunity. You can imagine my surprise in 2017 when I got the call just nine months after season four that I'd been selected for Alone Season 5. 
I was going to travel to Mongolia and compete once again with 10 items in the wilderness for half a million dollars. I couldn't believe it. You're not gonna believe where I am. I am in Mongolia. <laughs> I know. Yep, it's real. I'm in Mongolia, across from our camp, before the launch of Alone Season 5. And I'm climbing a peak. I wanna get to the top, check out the awesome views. This place is amazing. Nice, nice sunlight right now. You can do always do one more day. You could always do one more day. And that what I mean to say is the mind will always give up before the body does. This is particularly difficult because it becomes an absolutely mental challenge. It's you against you. That's all it is. Season five, right here. I love you, Girl in the Woods fans. Love you. Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> Look at Brooke's yeah, gun. Sun's out, guns out. That's the top right that song. Sun's out, guns out. launch day it's a clear day and it's very chilly yeah ready to do this just had a big breakfast and it's the best you can hope for stuff your belly one last time that's it I'll see you on the other side I've been back two days now I lasted 28 days out uh, in the field just for the simple fact that uh, I hadn't caught any fish in five days um, and I'm getting really skinny and I was just lonely. Got some broth and, and uh, fruit, crackers. It's all a really, really basic limited diet. It's on a refeeding plan right now um, where when you come out of the field, very limited food as far as like no big meals. So if you're wondering what I had my first meal was broth and a cracker. Well guys, this is it for me. I'm leaving camp, heading back to Ulaanbaatar today. Last day at orientation camp and tap out camp. But all good things must end. I will miss it. These days we split our time between Alaska and Michigan and we now have teenagers. You can still find me on YouTube, as well as my husband, Dave. His channel is called Bush Radical. My whole goal with my channel is to share my love of the outdoors and to inspire you to get outside and get happy. So what are you waiting for? Walk, come walk with me, feel the breeze, come walk with me, oh and dance, come dance with me. Shut for your feet, come dance with me. And I will tell you when you're older how I loved you just the same. It only matters where we're going, it never mattered from where you came. 
<laughs> like feathers, I'm sorry. Put it in here. With the light, Eat this goodness. It gets you down, steals your crown, and breaks your will. Oh, well, I, I'll pick you up, brush off the dust, and hold you still. I will tell you when you're older How I loved you just the same It only oh, matters where we're going It never mattered from where you came And go to sleep, Here, my darling All the night is gay the same it only matters where we're going it never mattered from where you came and I will tell you where I'm your order how I love you just the same it only matters where we're going it never from where you came It never mattered from Just where you came here. It never mattered from where you came This is why you climb mountains right here So you get to see all of this That's crazy good Want a bite? Here, take a bite <laughs> 